Jamie said, I'm Cindy Razor, and I work at the Bush School of Government and Public Service as the Writing Program Director and a member of the Faculty of International Affairs. Um, and I teach writing. I do uh, basically all things writing there um, with an assistant, I think is here, Brenda Kent. I think I saw her. Um, and so that means just, you know, really working with students, working with faculty, um, creating resources, teaching, consulting, et cetera. Uh, to help student, students improve their writing skills. And so this past semester, uh, really this past year, I've been focusing on how to use AI or how to leverage AI to help our students be better writers and thinkers. And if you've ever been to a workshop that I've been in or taught or led, um, you know I'm passionate about reflection and really just helping students sort of step outside of the assignment or you know the process and really think about um what what are they learning how are they learning it to, to solidify learning so i'm going to do this presentation on um writing and reflecting about the use of ai okay some um some one of the ways that i do this is through pre and post writing assignments and so these things i'll i'll talk a little more about what they look like in just a minute but they can be um low stakes they can be high stakes but the goal is is that you're helping students to think about using ai for um the process so um it could be brainstorming it could be peer review it could be feedback revising editing all of those things that are useful um, for the writing skills. And um, I, I feel like that learning really happens when, when we're able to or encourage our students to step outside of the assignment and articulate the steps or principles that guided their learning, um, sometimes known as metacognition or reflection. Um, and so when we can take the time to do that, to build that into our classes and into our assignments, um, it's a way to reinforce or really solidify learning. Um, the challenge can be is that it takes time and we've all got a you know a busy syllabus busy schedules and um the the process of reflection can seem like busy work at times for the student and or it could feel like it's another thing we have to grade and so i try to address those things head on because i incorporate i mean i encounter that as well when i'm you know building into those reflection opportunities means um, something has to give either in the class or with the assignments. And so I have some solutions that I'll talk about with that uh, because I do feel like it's something that can be done. And um, so one is to use reflection assignments to reinforce your course learning, um, student learning outcomes. And I'm gonna show you what that could look like through low and high stakes activities. And thanks to Deborah Fowler, I think I credit her for this all of the time, but NCTE, less is more. Um, and so when you can have you know, fewer assignments or cover less material, you can build in more opportunities to, to stop and reflect and really solidify learning. Okay, so um, I've created an infographic that I put into my syllabus that helps the students see um, what this could look like in the writing process. And so this isn't anything new for most of us teaching writing. You know, we have, we think about the process being things like inventing and planning, drafting and uh, assessing, revising, editing, and then maybe launching and or follow up. So what I wanted to do uh, when I designed the syllabus that I'm, I'm using now, and then I'm teaching a class in the spring is to think about how AI can help in that um, process. And so um, with inventing and planning, you know, we've been to a lot of sessions where um, you know, we've seen that uh, we can use AI for things like brainstorming and planning and um, generating um, ideas, uh, outlining, all of that. Um, but one of the things I wanna focus on with the, this process and really reflection is helping the students understand um, the analytic tool that, that I use for, for writing so that they're learning not only the tool and the process, but they're also engaging with AI to help them know that rhetorical context um, in a better way or more strategically. So the tool that I use, um, and this is just something I, I came up with, but it's it's really after years of thinking about what do students most need as they approach a writing assignment, not just in the classroom, but also in the workplace is the five Ps. And so I define these as people, 
um, purpose, problem, product, and process. And so the students basically um, are asked to engage in a in a pre-writing sort of um, think pair share or sometimes a discussion post, or we just talk about it in class. And sometimes we do a more formal um, assignment with this, but you know, who are the people involved? What do they care about? Um, what are, are, are their uses for the material or the information? Um, what's at stake? What do they do with their jobs? You know, all of those things that AI can help them learn. Um, and we do some practice assignments in class with this. So we talk about the audience and what is it that they are um, most um, concerned about. Uh, purpose would be, you know, uses. What is the purpose of the information or the product that you're creating? And again, there's a whole set of questions with that. Um, the problem would be the issue at stake and how are you going to learn more about that issue and how might you use AI to help you do that? And then the product, of course, is the thing that they're actually generating or that um, not generating in a sense of AI, but they're writing. So the writing product is that whether it be a presentation, a memo, a report, or, you know, some other deliverable and the message itself. And again, how can AI assist with that? And then process would be the steps that you're taking to do all of these things. Um, and so what I'm helping the students to see is there's so many ways that you can use AI to become um, more um, strategic and be very smarter about the writing assignment than just simply jumping into, okay, I have to write this thing for this class now. What do I write? How do I write it? What do I say? And then, you know, running to AI to, to write it for you. And that's not really what we want. We want our our students to engage a tool to help them with the process, but we have to know the process. And so that's one of the things that um, I think will be helpful, even as you think about your writing assignments what um, or assignments, what, what does that process look like? Okay, so most of the writing that I do is tech writing. And so bottom line up front means that you are encouraging the students to put the most important information at the top or at the, at the beginning. Um, because you're working and you're writing for busy readers. And so you want them to know uh, at the top or at the forefront of your presentation, what, what, what do you most need to know? And if they haven't used those five Ps to really understand who their audience is and what the problem is, um, then they're going to miss the bluff. They're going to write about what they want to say instead of what the audience needs to know. So this really requires that they, um, that they, that they do that. Okay, so what the process then would look like if you are going to try to scaffold reflection with your AI assisted assignments is really similar to what we were doing before AI when we did, um, you know, kind of book ending the pre writing and the post writing process is, um, you know, you, you do a kind of a pre writing or pre brief um, assignment, um, or it could be a discussion. Um, and then you, you know, you write about it and then you, you debrief about it. And so just building in how are you using AI or how will you use AI? What are the pros and cons of doing that? What was your, and then, you know, in the post being, what was your experience? What did you learn from doing that? What would you do differently the next time? And uh, maybe, um, you know, your prompts will be different or they're getting, you're hopefully getting more savvy about how to use tools like this, but you know, hitting that pause button and requiring them to reflect before um, and after the assignment, uh, I think is critical to help them solidify learning um, from what they're doing and particularly how AI may be assisting them with this. Okay, some low stakes uh, assignments may um, may look like this. And so you might do some think pair share, you might have a discussion post, or you might just uh, talk with them in class. It really depends on how big your class is. Um, but you know, you could ask them about how they're using or planning to use AI at different stages of the writing process, if they're writing, or different stages of the process that fits with your, um, your, your knowledge or your uh, expertise and your discipline. Um, potential benefits and drawbacks, again, helping them think about this ahead of time. And then also how they're going to acknowledge their use of AI to assist in that thinking and writing process. Um, and so I've given my students a, in my policy statement, it's kind of a work in progress, but a template 
and a policy for acknowledging their use of AI. Um, and then post, again, these could be just low stakes discussions, uh, maybe the first five minutes of the beginning of a class, um, or they could post something to the discussion board um, that answered, you know, what they did with it and um, how well did it work for them? What will they do differently next time? Or how would you advise a peer uh, to use this tool? Okay, some high stakes assignments. Um, and for me, this fits perfectly with my discipline and my starting student learning outcomes because my students write reports. And so my briefing reports um, you know, uh, fits the learning outcome, um, write, organize, design, and revise messages for busy readers. And so I have them do a, a briefing report. Um, I could also have them do a blog post or do a presentation, um, but they basically have to write their findings up in, a, in a, maybe a one-page memo um, using bluff uh, at the top. So what was the executive summary or the bottom line up front? Um, you know, did they use uh, high impact writing style and document design for a busy reader, et cetera. So the, the assessment actually reinforces the writing outcomes for the course. Okay, so here I've got, um, I'm gonna have to move some things around so I can dismiss. And I notice whenever I do this, here we go. So this is what one of the assignments looks like, briefing reports, um, AI worksheets. So they could do a kind of a pre-writing pre memo. It could be something really short. Um, it could be like a half page um, or longer. And then, you know, questions about how they're going to use it. Um, what will they need to find out? What tools might they use? How are they gonna uh, evaluate the information they find? Um, et cetera. And then a, a debriefing report, sometimes known as an after action review about learning uh, from the assignment, particularly AI. So what I'm doing here is I'm just, I'm building in of this AI layer into something I was already doing. So it's not a whole lot extra for my students to, to do this because they, they do these debriefing memos and short reports following a, a longer writing assignment anyway, but now I'm making them think strategically or requiring them to think strategically about how they used AI um, and how they're going to evaluate the information that comes from it. I even gave them a little template here. Um, when I asked AI to do this, it gave me that, which was very useful in helping me understand blank or not so useful dot, 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 because, and then therefore, and then next time I will. And so I really want them to think about the whole process and what that, um, what that looks like. Okay. Less is more, get more reflection or learning from fewer assignments. Again, thank you CTE for teaching me the value of this, because this is one of the hardest things for me uh, to do is, um, cut back on some of the stuff that I'm doing. So um, one of the things that I have found is helpful is a, um, and, and Brenda Kent is helping me with this, but a um, journal that is recording all of the ways that I'm using AI, because I found that I'm almost in the weeds of all these tools and what I've used them for. And so what I'm encouraging my students to do, I'm not requiring this, but I sh I've shown them this so they can see how valuable mapping um, their work can be. And so particularly when they're using a tool and they are re recording what they're using, what they're using it for, how it helped or how it didn't. And so what you can see here is if I need to just sort of be able to skim for my own purposes, a reflection about using AI, I can just go right to the right column and, and draw from it what are the takeaways from, from these different tools to come up with maybe three or four. Um, and these are things, you know, this is kind of a work in progress and it is a little tedious to every time I use something to go and post in it. But when I have to step back and really reflect, it's going to help. Um, quite a bit. I don't have to just pull from, you know, out of the air um, how to do this. 
And so I would encourage you, you know, as I kind of wrap this up um, in your own disciplines to think about how experts in your discipline think. Um, how do they solve problems? Uh, how do they analyze a topic? Or how do you, I should say, do that? What questions do you ask to help you unpack or deconstruct a complex issue? And then how might AI be used to help students complete these steps? And so this is something that they can take with them when they leave their, their class, that process of um, thinking critically and understanding what it looks like to think in your discipline. And one last thing I just wanted to plug uh, because it just worked out nicely that the last podcast by uh, Bonnie Stahoviak, who does the teaching in higher ed, interviewed Lindsay Dacopoulos, and she is the Associate Director for Educational Development at the Biggio Center. We, we, some of us are taking that um, Auburn course, thanks to A&M and CTE and Auburn graciously um, allowing us to do that on teaching with artificial intelligence. So I highly recommend that podcast and particularly that issue. She covers, they both talk about AI and she covers AI quite a bit. And that is all I have for you guys.